Hey guys, I wanted to do a video on the foolishness of preaching because the gospel is foolishness to them that are perishing. It is also bad news to the religious because they mock it as greasy grace, cheap grace, um, easy believism. The gospel is good news to be received. It's supposed to bring you joy. You know, it, it, the, the whole thing is pointing to Christ. God has provided salvation. He is your salvation. He came in the form of a man, laid down his life, paid your sin debt, and you have eternal life as a free gift. So I'm going to show you some greasy grace gospel presentations, which are biblical. Now, false converts or false preachers will tell you, repent of your sins or commit your life to Christ or give your will to the Lord. No, that's all what you're doing. That's your works. God give them true repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's to change their mind, stop trusting in their dead works, and trust in the living God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That he bore all your sins in his body, purged them by himself. And that is why we have eternal life. And you'll see here through the foolishness, foolishness of preaching, those that trust God based on hearing the word of God, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God, those that hear the message of Christ, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, hang behind me, thanks to our wonderful viewer, thank you, uh, that it's all about what Christ did for us, not what we do for him. Now, any of the verses you see where Peter, Paul, and all of y'all are telling us to change our ways, to get rid of the sin in our life, that's to already saved people, telling them to listen to the spirit within them, to be a good witness, to be uh, to live unto the good works we're saved to do. All of that. It has nothing to do with being saved. It's about profiting God, profiting others with our faith. It has nothing to do with getting saved. Eternal life is simply a free gift for all who believe. But the self-righteous don't like that message. They think they've done more to get it. They have qualified where you didn't. They, they think they either stop sinning or they... Uh, their heart conditions right, or they were willing to be good, or whatever. But we established the law. The law is up here. So we're saved by God's grace through faith. That's it, period. So they can mock it, hate it all they want, but a true believer will receive it with joy because they know the law has made them guilty. Their mouths have been stopped by the law. And so it's a schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. They know they need a Savior, and so they trust in the Savior. They have repented unto life. They have changed their mind and trusted in the Savior for salvation and not their dead works. As Hebrews says, let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith toward God. So let's look at this preaching that's foolishness. It's by the foolishness of preaching we're saved. We hear a message, what God's done for us. It's mixed with faith. We believe it. We're sealed. By the Holy Spirit of promise. That's how it works. That's why so few find it. Narrow is the way because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's only through him. All right? And if you try to come up another way, you're a thief and a robber. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians 1.21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So who's saved? Those that believe the message by the foolishness of preaching. It's foolishness to them. No, that's too easy. That's easy to believe. Since when is a gift hard to receive? It's just stupid that you want it to be difficult. You think you deserve it more. Bottom line. You don't think it's right that sinner over there gets saved just by believing. That's easy believism. That's nowhere in scripture. It says it's so great a salvation. It's the unspeakable gift. It's the free gift of eternal life. God says we should rejoice and stand in full assurance of faith, not mock it. All right, let's look over here in Ephesians. What does it mean to believe? It means to trust in, to rely on, to take God at his word and stand firm on it. Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. All right? That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And then it goes on to tell you the process here. 
in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Is there any mention of sin, changing your life, giving your life to Christ, making him Lord, any of that? See, acknowledging Jesus as Lord means to acknowledge he's a name above all names. He's the son of the living God. It's not Lord of your life. Every minute of your life, he'd have to be Lord over everything you do. And we all fail in that. That's not what it means. That is a sanctification issue. All right? That's a spiritual growth issue. So it tells you, does it say anything? In any of these, I'm going to show you three different places where people got saved by hearing a message, having it mixed with faith, and then the Holy Spirit coming. All right? Do they mind? Oh, that's too easy to hear the message of Christ. I guess we've heard the resurrection story so much we take it as, ah, it's no big deal. But this was a man coming back to life. He had fulfilled hundreds of prophecies. This was a huge deal. So, you know, it, it's crazy to me that people mock this glorious good news. Go ahead, mock it. Keep trusting in yourself. See how that works out for you in whom ye also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. What's that? That Christ died for your sins according to scriptures, the bearing rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, that he purged your sins. He wore his sin in your own body. And when you put your trust in him, because he wore your sin, you get to wear his righteousness. God imputes righteousness on you. As Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. It said, if Abraham but justified by works, he have wear of the glory, but not before God. See, nobody's justified by works before God. Because if it's grace, it's no longer works. You cannot add them because it, it makes grace no more grace. Uh, after that, you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We were purchased, bought with a price. He, we're owned by God. And he's coming back to redeem this body unto the praise of his glory. So uh, let's go over to Acts 16. It's a very famous one. It's the Philippian jailer. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner says fled. Now, if this is the one place where it's clearly asked, what must I do to be saved? Do you think God would have forgot anything here? Do you think he would have left anything out? This is the one place where it's flat out asked. All right, let's see. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. Because if prisoners escaped, they were executed. So he was going to kill himself. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Why, he just witnessed an earthquake and they were praising God and the earthquake came and all the doors opened and he knew that was God. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Turn from your sins, commit your life to Christ. No, none of that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and the house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And then he, bapt he was baptized. Why? Because he believed. Let's see what happens with Philip and uh, <coughs> Cornelius. Any, any mentioning of sin, or changing your life, or being a better person, or keeping the commandment? None of that. All right? The gospel message is God's offer to you of the free gift of eternal life through what Christ did. He paid for it. Mock it all you want. I don't care. I, I trust in God's power unto salvation and not my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith. All right. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he was talking about uh, he was bruised for our transgression, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, the ch by his stripes real. He's talking about the suffering of Christ for us, right? But the Ethiopian doesn't understand what who he's talking about. And he says, uh, Hey, you understand what you're reading? Understand it thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So what's Philip doing? 
telling him about Jesus. This isn't clean up your life, act right, stop sinning, give your life to, none of that. All right, this is the testimony of Christ. The gospel is the good news of Christ paying your sin debt and offering you eternal life through him, period. That's the gospel. Hate it? What would you mock so glorious a salvation and take the glory away from God? How dare you in your arrogance think you can add to that? It's ridiculous. Like what he did wasn't enough. The place of the scripture which you read, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter like a lamb dumb before his shear, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. So he's testifying of Jesus through Isaiah, okay? And uh, the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. That is what he preached, okay? And as they went their way, they came uh, to a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What does hinder me to baptize? What did, what did Philip say? Well, make sure you change your life and be willing to stop sinning. No, this is what he said. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So what is it? Before you baptize, you should believe with all your heart. Because the baptism represents, by immersion, that you died, were buried, and rose again with Christ. And yes, you should walk in newness of life. But until the Holy Spirit is in you, till you have trusted only in what Christ did, not your turning from sin, because that's not what repent means anyway, not cleaning up your life, not giving your life to Jesus, your Savior that gave his life for you, you got it twisted, <coughs> submitting your will or any other such non-biblical nonsense, you're not even saved. you got to believe with all your heart what Christ did for you, then get baptized. So uh, it, it's just ridiculous. Let's look over at uh, in Acts, where, where Peter's teaching uh, Cornelius. Let's see if he's preaching about his sin. Let me see. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. And they saw in a vision, and an angel told him to call Peter. And then Peter is given a vision of, uh, of unclean animals three times, kill and eat. And it represents, don't think the Gentiles are unclean. Because if I make them clean, they're clean. So he's, the Lord is telling him, go into a Gentile's house, which was forbidden for Jews back then. Okay? So I, this is a long section. That's why I'm telling you what happened here. You can read it yourself in Acts 10. Peter went down to the men. He said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man, one that fears God, and of good report among the Jews, was warned by God, a holy angel, to send for thee into his house. So Peter comes into his house. Cornelius meets him. He falls down at his feet and worships him. He goes, hey, hey, stand up, because I'm a man just like you are. He talks with him, and they come together. And he said, you know, it's unlawful for a Jew to be in a Gentile's house. But God told me, don't call anything unclean. I've made clean. And I came because, because God told me to. Okay? So uh, then, here, here's Peter. He said, Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Meaning he doesn't care if you're Jew or Gentile. But in every nation, that he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So was Cornelius saved by his works and his alms? No. That reached out to God, and God, therefore, sent Peter to give him the good news of the gospel. You see? So his work called out to God, and God responded by making sure Cornelius got saved by what? The foolishness of preaching. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to believe on the one who comes after him, that is Christ Jesus. So what was repentance? To turn to Christ in faith. The Messiah is here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, uh, again, metanoia, metanoia, change your mind. That's repentance. Let's see. Uh... Nowhere will you see of your sin after the word repent for salvation. It's not even in the King James Bible. All right, so what is he preaching here? All right, this, this is the message he preaches to Cornelius, and then the Holy Spirit falls. Nothing about sin, nothing about living right, nothing about giving your life to God, 
It's all about Christ giving his life for him. Listen, and we are witnesses of all things which he did in both the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hang on a tree. There's his crucifixion. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. There's the resurrection. What's that? The gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the gospel presentation, greasy grace that you hate. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So there's proof of his resurrection. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he which is ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall re receive remission of sins. Did you hear that? What is the message preached? Christ is the promised one. He is the one that died on the cross and paid for your sins, was buried and rose again. And whosoever believes in him shall have remission of sins. Hmm. That's the gospel message. Let's hear that again. To get him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Why? Because they were Gentiles. So there's a greasy grace in Scripture. Three places where the gospel's preached, no mention of sin, no mention of changing your life, giving your life to God, turning your life over, changing, getting a new, turning over a new leaf, none of that. The gospel is greasy grace, the foolishness of preaching. Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. That's the gospel, period. It's not part of the gospel, it's all the gospel. And every time it was preached, it was mixed with faith, they received it, the Holy Ghost fell. And they were born of God. So go ahead and mock it, it's greasy grace if you want to, it's the biblical gospel account. Alright, God bless you guys.